أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين we are back to uh, the sessions of the Ramadan retreat Ramadan treat on the Hikam of Ibn Atayla and Iskandari uh, so to begin uh, let us recite together the Okocha Fabuli Quran أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم وغير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين نعم الحمد لله we started this event uh, with the intention that we are going to have this every weekend Saturday and Sunday and we are grateful my dear Allah who um, helped us to plan and um, uh, execute those plans. So today marks the second to the last session. And inshallah on the last day, we are going to introduce to you the a, a continue, uh, a, a link to continue the series with Dr. Mohammed inshallah. And the ICAM, as you know it, is uh, as we started and introduced this every session that the ICAM is a compilation of some uh, some uh, aphorism, let's put it that way, or short messages, which are meant to be um, something to recall people back to their senses. Let me put it that way. Essentially, for test care, for purification, in all of our implication of our affairs, um, our daily affairs, our internal affairs, our external affairs. Um, and these uh, aphorisms, they contain more than 200 in it. And, uh, we find it to be useful over time, especially in the, during our time that we have had, we are so busy and we have lots of things that call our attention. And so that we hope that when we explain some of these aphorisms, it will be a, a way to divert his attention to the truth. The essence of all of this politician is to direct our mind back to Tawheed, back to Allah. And uh, alhamdulillah, this session has been fruitful, has been very beneficial, especially I'm also very grateful and give thanks to uh, Allah and uh, for our facilitator, Dr. Mohamed Nuruddin Ashafi for his um, effort and unwavering um, determination to always uh, continue this session. And I pray to my Allah to continue to increase his wisdom to deliver better than expected. He is, uh, he has been our facilitator and uh, I don't need to introduce him again, but uh, I, I will just say that I'm the is an alumnus of Al Azhar University. Uh, I wanted to say about this is that, uh, especially if you're coming from Nigeria background, before you can be recommended to go to Al Azhar, it means that you are the best in your uh, madrasa or where you have been trained previously. So, and this is a testament of the fact that uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed him that is is a knowledgeable person. Uh, and Alhamdulillah now currently is a senior lecturer at the University of Sultan Zain and Abidi. Um, and we want to continue this session today with the, uh, we've done this ICAM uh, about the four ICAMs. Aphorism, last weekend we, we treated Aphorism 104 and Aphorism 106. And you can always find them on our YouTube link, which we share in the flyer, in the broadcast uh, text. So without wasting uh, for that, uh, without wasting much of our time again, so I will just ask the doctor to continue to start the explanation of the exam. This way. Audhu billahi sami al alim al basir min al shaitan al rajim min hamsihi wa nafakhihi wa nafathihi. Bismillahi al rahman al rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا وسندنا وغثنا ووسيلتنا إلى ربنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وآله وصحبه وأتباعه إلى يوم الدين وبعد آمين وبعد الأحبة في الله المستمعين الأفاضل والكرام 
الاخوات والاخوات السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته uh, الحمد لله رب العالمين we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he is the only one worthy of all praises and adorations and thanksfulness and glorifications and gratifications we thank him we adore him we appreciate him in all ramifications we do ask him in his bent in his bounty and mercy to further show us his mercies and bounties and blessings in abundance and multifold upon the noble prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his household companions and followers until the day of reckoning and beyond i mean uh fellow seekers of the truth uh and uh, those present and those who are going to come across this much later inshallah uh, we greet ourselves with the best form of greeting assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh so we welcome ourselves to the seventh session of our ramadan spiritual treats in the guiding of the hikam of ibn abdullah as-sakandari in collaboration with the international student of islamic psychology uh west west african chapter nigerian branch so we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has uh, made, made us uh, come this far alhamdulillah so today is uh, the seventh session and uh, incidentally the second to the last session in this ramadan of this year 1445 we ask him allah in his mercy and bounty to grant us many years of witnessing this in life wealth health and in abundance grace innahu ala dhalika qadir wa bil ijabati jadir nimul mawla wa nimul nasir so insha allah for today and tomorrow so we are going to be treating aphorisms 113 and 115 so for today 113 uh, insha allah and for tomorrow we are going to treat aphorism 115 be isn't it la so um here it is uh the theme for today's uh discussion is uh arrival of sustenance and receptivity of that sustenance uh this is in line with the as the descendants of divine race on the uh in accordance with the purity of our heart now so the explanation of the first part of the theme the arrival of sustenance uh and the receptivity of that sustenance so this is meant to say that in the line with uh, one of the hadiths of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when once when he found someone in the mosque in the masjid sorry uh, uh spending longer time from subh until after isha and the prophet did ask him so do you not have any job doing do you not have any family do you not have any source of uh, uh getting income then the person answered by saying i rely on the sustenance coming from allah i believe that allah uh, inna allah yarzuqu man yasha bi ghairi hisab as stated in surah to maryam allah gives sustenance to whomever he wills without even any work or any means so then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded to him that ya rajul uh, inna sama allah tumtiru dhahaba wal fiddah the heavens does not rain gold or silver so you have to go out and work so it is through the type of work that you work that allah is going to Uh, award you and accord you sustenance it doesn't mean it is not automatic so you have to work then ask allah to bless your work then sustenance will come through that so that is the 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 explanation of the arrival of sustenance and receptivity of that uh, so before we can get uh, be prepared to receive that sustenance we must have uh, we must have uh, did, done something uh, Push, push something forward to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay and in the same uh in the same spirit uh if our heart 
is dirty and impure, we cannot, uh, we cannot expect and learn to show the divine mercy over it. So before we can expect our the, uh, divine mercy to come from Allah, we have to get our heart prepared for it. So uh, this is the, 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 the only person, all, all of us have to do that. The only person that was uh, was free of that was the Nabi Yuna Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Allah referred to him, Alam Nashroh Halaka Sodrak, Awadona Anka Wizok, all this, the purity of heart and soul and self and mind and intellect has been done pre uh, pre messengerhood. So only him was was spared of that. All of us we have to work for it. So as we are going to relate that to two or three ayahs of the Quran. So these are the explanations of the of the uh, the theme. Now. Aphorism number 113, as we mentioned always, uh, all of the aphorisms are in line with at least one verse of the Quran. So this aphorism number 113, uh, we find two specific verses uh, of, for it uh, in correspondence. One is in Surah to rahman and the other in Surah Al-An'am. So the one in Surah Al-Rahman is the popular one. Hal jaza'ul ihsan illa al-ihsan. Is there a reward for goodness other than goodness? So that is in the same vein. Man amala, man amala salihan fa li nafsihi wa man asa'a fa alayha wa ma rabbuka bi zolamin lil abid. Anyone who does good deeds or deeds of goodness he is doing it for himself, in favor of, him, of himself. And anyone who does otherwise is doing it against himself. Allah is not going to be unjust to anyone, to any of his servants. So, hal jaza'ul ihsan illa al-ihsan. So, if we are good, if we want goodness from Allah, we have to prepare ourselves with that good. We have to present goodness towards him. So we have to have listened to him. We have to have followed his rules and regulations. We have to have accepted his commandments. We have to have been executing his, uh, uh, his act of ibadat. Otherwise, it will be like someone who is hiding in the masjid and asking Allah to bring sustenance to him in the masjid. So that is not going to be. And Allah is not going to be unfair or unjust. Uh, granting those who are not doing anything sustenance and not granting it to those who are doing things. Another ayah is, وَلِكُلِّ دَرَجَاتٍ مِمَّا عَمِلُوا وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ أَمَّا يَعْمَلُونَ In Surah Al-Am, Ayah 132. Every, every position that we are going to accord you, you must have, you, you must have deserved it. You must have worked for it. Okay? Uh, for example, one cannot just sit down and be awarded the, the degree of bachelor degree. Why not going for it? One cannot be awarded the degree of master's degree without working for it. One cannot be awarded or accorded to uh, uh, the admitted to the level of PhD without having worked for it uh, diligently. One cannot be accorded the uh, the, the status of being a, a associate professor, professor, emeritus professor, without having worked for it. One cannot become a senator without being into the House of Senate. One cannot be a, uh, be a state governor without having all this. So all this, every position that you are going to be accorded to, you would have you to, have, uh, uh, to have worked deservedly for it. For your Lord is never ignorant of what everyone does. The Lord is never ignorant, never unaware of, of, of things that everyone does. So in relation to that, so we have a, snip, uh, a snippet of this in the in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, or the popular saying that says, al jazau Reward is in accordance to the type of deeds that we do. So also in relation to Innamal Amalubin Niyat wa Innamal Kulli Muri'i Manawa. 
and so on and so forth in relation to the first hadith of Arba'in and Nawawiyah. So these are the verses that we see uh, in correlation with aphorism number 113. And here, uh, this is aphorism number 113 as presented in the Hikam of Ibn Atta Ilahi as secondary. So he says, and I read as presented, Wurudul imudadi bihasabil isti'idadi wa shurukul anwari ala hasabi sofa il asrari. I repeat, quoting Ibn Atta Ilai as secondary, Wurudul imudadi bihasabil isti'idadi wa shurukul anwari now, uh, let me explain some words that requires attention there. Number one is wurud. Wurud, the arrival of something, the uh, descending of something, so the acceptance of something. Al imudadi here, so these are the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in, 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 in terms of al-arzaq, al-arzaq, yani the sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the acceptance of prayer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-istinadad, so that is preparation, preparation, okay, getting ready for something. Shuruku, uh, that is the rising of something, the rising. Rising up, for example, they use it usually in rising up of the sun. When the sun rises, they say shuruk. Al Anwar here is the plural form of anur, the plural form of anur, which means lights. Lights. But here, shurukul anwar, it means the, the glaring, the glaring of the lights of God, of the, the divine light, the glaring, the showering of the divine light. So that is what shurukul anwar here means. Now, sofahi al-asrar. Sofahi here means tohara. Tohara, the clean, uh, cleanliness, purity. Al-asrar here is the plural form of asirru. Asirru literally is secret. Secret. But here symbolically, it, uh, it symbolizes the heart. The heart, the innermost self of a, of a human being the innermost, the purest uh, uh, aspect of human being. That is the heart, the innermost uh, 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 self, part of the human being. So these are some of the words that I think we uh, need to clarify before going with the translation. Now, given the meaning of the aphorism, it says, Wurudul imudadi bihasabil istinidad, the acceptance or the arrival of the sustenance of, uh, from Allah would be in accordance with the preparation that we had for it. The arrival of sustenance of Allah will be in accordance with the, in, with the preparation that we had for it. That is to say, the, receptiv uh, the, the receptivity of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the sustenance will be based on what we have put forward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the arrival. So if we have among uh, amila solihan, okay, fall enough, if we have put off, uh, forward to Allah good deeds, we would expect good results. And if we have presented the otherwise, so otherwise will come. So we cannot plant sugar cane and expect it to come to uh, to, to, to reap a uh, uh, honey for us. We cannot plant mango and expect it to what to give us banana. So okay, in in non ordinary in normal cases, unless it is a uh, uh, non biologically uh, interfered with. So washurukul anwari ala hasabi sofa il asrar. On the other hand, the glaring of the divine lights is in accordance with, is going to be in accordance to the purification of the heart. Okay, the, purific the purification of heart. That is to say, before the divine light can be showered unto us, 
we must have prepared our heart for it. For it. So how do we prepare our heart for it or ourselves for it? Is by doing al amalu soliha, by executing the good deeds that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has ordered us to do, such as a salawat al khamsu, a siyam in the in the month of Ramadan, or keeping of zakat if we are blessed, we are performing pilgrimage if we are blessed with it, uh, giving and sharing with others and uh, making shahada, believing fervently in the existence of Allah and all utterly relying on him. So uh, uh, being good to one's parent, being good and nice to one's neighbor, being good and nice and upright with one's spouse, wife, uh, husband, children, uh, close uh, family relation, keeping and keeping the ties of what of families, okay? And being honest and sincere in one's job, all these are the things that prepare ones for the receptance of the divine light. We cannot be rough in life and expect uh, clean our hearts to be clean to receive the divine light. Divine light will not come to the rough life, rough heart, except if Allah wishes to uh, to act the way extraordinary. Okay, but under the normal circumstances, when, uh, uh, for example. Uh, it is just like uh, a breeze passing on the on uh, on a dead meat on a dead animal. So any breeze that passes from a dead animal, rotting animal, so will be in accordance with the with the with the smell of that dead animal. So in other way, in other uh, in uh, similarly, if a, if a breeze passes through someone who is selling perfume. So that what uh, the, the 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 breeze that we smell, we smell that pef pef also. So that is the same way. So if uh, even if the grace of Allah is passing through our heart, if the heart is rotting and decayed, the fruit we this fruit and the and the product will also come out decay. So, but if we, our heart is prepared for it, so if it is coming, then the fruit and the product will also be clean. So that is just the the point of the aphorism. So literally, it says, the arrival of sustenance is in accordance with uh, receptivity, while the ray out of light is in accordance with the purity of the innermost being. In other words, the sent divine support. So see, divine support here is what we call al imudad Imudad, the support of Allah, the divine support that comes from Allah. So it is going to be in accordance with the level of our preparedness. So whatever we have prepared for it. And in and spiritual illumination, that is Shurukul Anwar, uh, in accordance with the purity of our innermost being. So we be uh we be based on whatever we have prepared for it. Okay, so now when we are doing bachelor degree, the degree that will be awarded and that will be right, written on our certificate with bachelor of degree. If we have not gone to the level of master's degree, we will not get the uh, get awarded with the certificate of master's degree. So that is the same way. So and this has level the same way that we have our our levels in life. So this is the what the uh, the aphorism number one hundred and thirteen. Now let's go see to. Uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Majid Asharinobi's interpretation to that aphorism, he says, Anna wurud al imdadi min hadirat li malik li jawadi innama yakunu lil abdi bihasabi istindadi hi li dhalika. It means that the arrival of the divine support from Allah min hadirat li maliki from the presence of the of the of the one of the king al jawad who is the best giver so the arrival of the gift of the divine gift from the presence of allah inama yakunu lil abdi it comes to a servant bihasabi istidadihi lidhalika in accordance to what he has prepared for it so what how is it going to be uh, is how is he going to get prepared for it uh, by cleansing his heart and constantly re, uh, re, 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 repeating 
and reading is awrad. So this awrad, it has two meanings. The first meaning is what we call litanies. Litanies, L-I-T-A-N-I-E-S, litanies. In a very simple form, al-adhikar, al-adhikar. So the, uh, the, the, what we do to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as seeking forgiveness through istighfar, such as remembering Allah through la ilaha illallah, such as praising Allah by saying alhamdulillah, such as uh, uh, showering the mercy upon the Prophet by through Allah Allah Sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam and so on. So these are one meaning. The other meaning al awrad these are amalul ibadah. So the uh, the acts of worship, such as uh, the prayers, observ observance of prayers, uh, the uh, fasting of Ramadan, and so on and so forth. So in all form, so preparing ourselves by cleansing it and training it to be to be what to be uh, to be adapted with all these forms of uh, ibadah. So washurukul anwaru fi kolbi. Okay, al arif. Wal muradu biha al ulum al wal 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 muarif. So and the the shower, the shining of the divine lights in the heart of the knowers of the truth. Al arif here are what we call gnostics. G n o s t i c s. Gnostics in a very simple form. Knowers of Allah. So wal muradu biha. So what we mean by shurukul anwari here, the divine rays of light, what is meant by it are al-ulum wal ma'arif, knowledge and informations that Allah shows us in the heart. So and this also, inama yakunu ala hasabi sofa il asrori. So it is also in accordance to the level of the cleanliness and purity of the of the of the of the of the, of the, of the secret that is of the heart. So at, according to the level of what of the purity, min kaderin, min kaderin wal athar. So purity from all connection with the materialities and naturalities of things, from all worldly materials and all worldly things. So we have the hil hikma ifbatun li sharia min haythul akhzibil asbab. So this aphorism is a uh, is an establishment. Is uh, is a uh, is uh, it's it's like a shahid. It's an evidence and a proof. Okay, uh, further strengthen the sharia and what we have in the sharia. That is what we have in the Quran. Me haythul aqzubil asbab that says that there must be a factor or something that we rely on before expecting mercy from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Such as in the two ayahs that we have just quoted, al jazaul ihsan illa al ihsan. Is there any reward for deeds except the uh, except goodness? Okay, uh, uh, and also wama wa inna wa inna kulla darajat mimma amelun. So the, the 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 position that we are going to accord to everyone is going to be in accordance to what they have done, what they have passed through. Wama rabbuka bizolamin lil abid. Allah is not going to be unjust or oppressive to anyone of his what of his servants. Okay, so. Uh, this is in line with what with the Sharia stipulation. So, but before this, there was a previous aphorism, and that was uh, aphorism number sixty-nine. That was aphorism number sixty-nine. So the aphorism says, "Kolama takunu lwaridatu ilahiya illa bagata." Okay, uh, the. Waridatul ilahiya, the divine waridat waridatul ilahiya here is uh, similar to shurukul anwar, the the uh, the shining of the divine light. So it say, that aphorism number sixty nine says, uh, in most cases, the divine goodies, the divine lights and guidance always come unexpected. Okay. Now, if we have read that aphorism number 69, that says the divine guidance come unexpected, unplanned for. Now, here we, we see another aphorism saying that we have to prepare for it. So we might think these are uh, uh, contradictory to each other. No, there is no contradiction here. So uh, in practice, in practice, in kulla darajati mimma amalu. To every position, anything that we are going to get awarded, we have to work for it. 
So the jhana is not free. The nerve is also not free. Those who are going to be admitted into jhana, they are going to work for it. And those who are going to be admitted into nerve, into the power, into the air fire, they are also going to work for it. Just as the person who is going to pass an exam in, in life is going to work, study for it. And those who are also not going to pass, they are also going to not study for it. So they are going to spend the same time. This one spends the time fruitfully. The other one spends the, the time uselessly. So the, the same time are going to be spent. So in the way, so, but uh, the second, this act of forest number 69, it, it shows the mercy, the extraordinary mercy of Allah when he wishes. When he wishes. So it means that Emalu Fasayar Allah Amalakun. So that aphorism number 69 is in accordance with the ayah of Quran that says, Emalu Fasayar Allah Amalakun. Just continue doing what you want to do, what you are supposed to do, what Allah asks you to do. Don't expect anything. Fasayar Allah Amalakun. Allah is aware of what you do. And if He likes, when He likes, so according to His wish, he will show you what you want. You do not have to ask. So this is the explanation between and the, the connection between the two, the two uh, aphorisms. So there is no contradiction in the two aphorisms. Aphorism number 69 and aphorism number 113. So uh, in sum, so these are just the summary of the whole thing. So we, uh, through the explanation of Sheikh Abdul Majid Ashar Nobi, we come to realize that spiritual divine support sent to the heart of the servant is in accordance with the strength of uh, the, uh, the, 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 the preparedness which has become ingrained in that man. And also the appearance of the lights of certainty will be in accordance with the purity of the soul of the servant from the turbidity of being attached to the sensory phenomena and finding rest in other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we, uh, so just simply put, we work, we get what we want. We, uh, we, 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 we serve Allah, then we get the divine light. So that is in some, inna kulla darajatin mimma amilu. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the benefit therein in the aphorisms and the ayahs. Now, for night and the 27 supplications, so uh, this, uh, this is uh, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is in line with it. Subhanaka anta Allahu al hayyul qayyum. Subhanaka anta Allahu al hayyul qayyum. Subhanaka anta Allahu al hayyul qayyum. Uh, the meaning is very simple. Uh, glory be to you, Allah, the, the living and the ever present. Okay, the one who is going to live forever without any, uh, without any one taking his position. So this can be repeated 116 times or more. So after we make sure that we are in pure, uh, we are pure, we are in uh, purification after wudu. Uh, observing two uh, nafila uh, or four or six or more. So first raka with Surat al-Fatiha and at least uh, Surat al-Kafirun. On the first, second one, Surat al-Fatiha and Surat al-Ikhlas. Okay. And we can read any other surah. So these are just the, the recommended one. Surat al-Inshura, al is also there. But Duha is also there. Any other surah. So two raka, four, six, the more, the better. So then we start by reciting the Subhanaka Anta Allahul Hayyul Qayyum. So this is, uh, uh, it is good to do it in the night uh, during the Tahajjud and also during the day when we are at work, when we are driving, when we are working in the house, when we are going in the mall, when we are going on the street. So it doesn't, we don't have to say it loud, we can keep reciting it in ourselves. So all of those uh, names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And uh, the benefit of uh, uh, of all the names of Allah, so it means to draw one close closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So in a, uh, in uh, in addition to that, so such a person who recites it 
uh, with uh, with uh, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be granted peaceful of mind and serene life by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the virtue of his name, Allahu al-Hayyu al-Qayyum, to grant us all our heart our desires and requests. Inna hu ala dhalika qadir wa bil ijabati jadir. Nima al-Mawla wa nima al-Nasur. And finally, so for the uh, uh, for natural cures, for natural diseases that we usually uh, give, uh, today is just for loss of strength. So that is that's supposed to be L-O-S-S, -S, not L-O-S-T. L-O-S-S, -S, loss of strength and energy restore or restoration of energy. And it is uh, just for, you just need two things. Uh, just ordinary 7-Up that we used to buy or drink or Sprite because both of them contains uh, almost the same content and ingredients. So either 7-Up or Sprite. We cannot use... Uh, uh, Coca-Cola, we cannot. Uh, Pepsi, we cannot. So 7-Up yeah. and Sprite, because both of them, they have citric ingredient in them. Citric uh, ingredient, at least. Or they have, if not uh, natural, at least they have citric uh, ingredients in them. So then we add uh, a level teaspoonful of stable salt. So we, we pour it into it. So but we have to be careful because it can uh, just pop up. So we shake it gently to make sure that the, uh, the, the, the salt is dissolved uh, permanently into it. Okay, so we can keep it in the fridge or uh, anywhere. So when we want to use it, uh, we can drink it uh, just about 25 ml twice a day for one week. Okay, that is to regain energy and uh, particularly after the uh, after uh, some treatment for malaria and so on and so forth after working tirelessly and also it is useful for uh, uh, for activities man and uh, corpus activities also so to say so and it is uh, uh, it is for elders and adults not for uh, for teenagers or uh, uh, younger people it is for adults. Okay, so take uh, one tumbler, tumbler, we call half tumbler. So that is about 25 mil. Okay, twice, day, twice, uh, twice a day, morning and night, uh, and for a week. So after a week, we can relax, then take it every three, three days. After that, every one, one week, uh, every, every week, so then continuously like that. So then uh, also, it is not meant for pregnant women. So uh, pregnant women cannot uh, use it. But uh, women on menstruation can use it. So it is the pains of the, the menstrual pain, and it also uh, cleanses the, uh, the, uh, them the more. Okay, so that is uh, for that. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all the benefits therein. Inna hu ala dhalika qadir wa bil ijabati jadir nima al wa nima nasir With this, we conclude our session for today. Thank you very much for... Uh, to ICIP, uh, generally the ICIP West African, the particularly ICIP Nigerian chapter, particularly the coordinator, uh, Brother Abla Aziz and our sister Latifa, right? From right. So thank you for joining us and not making only us to speaking to ourselves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all the benefit sharing. And those who are going to come across this later, may Allah make it beneficial to all of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam jazakumullah khairan. I surrender myself and every one of you under the protection and guide of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whose protection and guide nothing is missed and lost. Astaudi'ukum wa nafsi fi ri'ayatillahi alladhi la yudi'u wa da'ilahu wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you very much, sir. So, may Allah continue to increase you in uh, beneficial knowledge. Mm -hmm. I have a question from Mr. Tifa here. Um, mm -hmm. So, maybe I should paraphrase it like this. Okay, well, I just read it. So, how can we identify divine inspirations from other thoughts that come to our mind? So, what is different between the various, I'm just thinking about something and then boom. Okay, I got the answer. So, 
how can we differentiate between, okay, this is actually a bovine thought, or this is actually a thought that I was able to come up with my intellect. Is there something like that? Or all the thoughts uh, are the same? Because as we know that we, there is Athar, uh, uh, is this the it from Shetan and from uh, Angel, Angelic one. And according to Imam Bazaria, and also there is another one, another one directly from Allah. So probably that's the divine. So this is the question she's asking. Is there a way to differentiate that? How do we know this is divine? Uh, to Allah is all praises. Um, well, this is not hard. It is not hard to notice. Um, it is like this. Uh, when we plant maize, when we, when we cultivate our land and we plant maize, what do we expect to harvest? So we ex we expect to harvest bunches of maize, right? Yeah. So we don't expect to affect bunches of yam. Uh, on the other hand, if we have planted yam, we expect yam to come. And when we get yam, we are not surprised that we are getting yam. So when we get other than yam, then we get surprised. Oh, why am I getting yam? I did not plant yam. So, so this is just a, 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 a parable. It's just a similitude. If we notice a whisper in ourselves, if we have been in line of that before, we will be able to differentiate between what we are whispered into and what we were accustomed with. Now, the, the basic is that there is no shortcut. Mm -hmm. Adhering to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the basic of all inspirational reception. Mm -hmm. So for those, who do not follow divine instructions stipulated in the Sharia, instance in the Quran, according to the Hadith. So whatever they get from not working according to that is evil. Hmm. Now, someone who is praying regularly and observing his salawat and uh, have some uh, remembrance that he does, maybe reciting Kuluwa Allah continuously every day, or reciting La ilaha illallah continuously every day, reciting Istighfar continuously, um, uh, being diligent in his Azkar and being good uh, to, his, uh, to everyone, having pure heart. Okay, so now, and such a person sleeps and finds himself in a uh, among a gathering of people that are reciting the same thing that he or she is accustomed to. And when we wake up, we need not worry about, uh, about this. It is what it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is linking together link, uh, like minds like ourselves that, oh, this is, this is uh, the likelihood. So when we wake up, we need no fear. Okay, so this is a good thing. So we should be afraid when we find ourselves among the black clothed people. That oh, why am I found? Why am I among these people? But what they are doing is not as God. What they are doing is something else. Why did I find myself? Then we need to check ourselves whether the intention with which we are doing what we are doing is pure or not. Hmm. Okay, so. Uh, if we are doing, if we are following the Sharia, the stipulation of the Quran, the instruction of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the uh, some of uh, what we have in the Salaf of Salihin that we, they are doing, okay, and naturally we are pure in heart to ourselves, to neighbors, to others, then whatever comes to our heart, comes to us, we be a divine instruction and guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is not wicked. 
He is not unjust. He is not an oppressor that we render those who are following him to be misled by any whimsies. No, he, is, he doesn't do that. If we find anything or notice anything of that, we should check ourselves again and see, oh, is it is it purely for Allah or not? Am I doing something that is antagonizing what I am doing externally? So these are the these are the way. So otherwise, so if we are if we receive anything on the prepared mind, what we have received is is, is surely from Allah. So let me give a very simple example. Uh, there are two people who who had a then. Two people were sleeping. Both of them had a then on the same day. And they went to a sheikh, okay? And uh, the first one came and, and asked uh, the sheikh for interpretation. When I was sleeping, I heard a then recited into my hearings. And when I woke up, I kept re re remembering and repeating the, the stanza of a then. So sheikh said, you are going to uh, uh, you are going to become a, 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 a noble person and interpreting it in a positive manner, in a positive way, so that uh, that suited the people that were in presence. So then they liked it. Oh, mashallah, is a good person. It's a kind other person. Then another person came came not long afterward with uh, narrating that he also slept and had a then. But the imam, the, the, the sheikh told him, you have to change your way. You have to change. It is an instruction saying that you the end is coming for you. If you do not desist from what you are doing, then it, 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 it is going to be devastating. Then the people in the presence were, were shocked that, so sheikh, um, the, the, same, the two people came, two persons came with the same dreams. And you interpreted it differently. What is the what is happening? What is what what happened? Then he said, uh, uh, "What what they were shown is uh, in accordance with what they have been practiced, what their life practice uh, has been has been. So just like in uh, in Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam." So when he was in the prison with other two prisoners, when the uh, when both of them had dreams, okay. So at the same time, at the same night, at the same time, to so interpret it to them, he said he told one of he told them one of you is going to be freed through this dream, and is going to become close to the to the king, and one of you it's uh, the dream means that he is going to be uh, birds are going to to eat on his head. Meaning to say, he is going to be chopped off. He's going to be uh, uh, dealt with, uh, hung in by death. Okay, so he didn't tell this and that, but so the same people, the same place, the same dream, and the same. So, and uh, Sheikh said, uh, the first one that came is actually a righteous person. So he he deals with people in righteous manner. So that is uh, that is uh, that is. Uh, uh, like a uh, notice for him to continue what he was doing, that Allah is pleased with him. And to, so because he remembered the Adhan and still reciting it when he woke up. So the, the one that came, what he did not tell us it was that when he woke up, he did not wake up with the recitation of the Adhan. His mouth were closed when he woke up and he could not remember the Adhan. So it means he was a thief. He was doing some things that, uh, so, and it is a warning for him to desist from thieving, from stealing people's money. So otherwise, end is coming on him and it will be cut up. Oh, then the people understood. So based on this uh, very simple narration, so uh, it is uh, uh, it is uh, based on our prepar preparation, okay? What we had before, then we can use it to interpret. We are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us aright. Uh, I think so, but I think this is clear, right? When he, when you were explaining the uh, this could see came to my mind, the popular this could see that talks about um I'm trying to look for it where it says uh abdi bishain habba ilayya. 
mayazalu abdi taqarrabu ilayya bi nawafili hatta uhibbahu so that's so that maybe like you said that once you, whatever you put forward you do righteous deeds and all that before you know it you you become consumed in the in the presence of Allah so I, I, maybe I should just place the edit or I don't say the edit say now um I will place the edit now so okay mm. أحببته وإذا أحببته كنت يده الذي يبتش به كنت أينه الذي يبصر به ما كنت to and so on and so forth I become his eyes with his with uh, with which is here the eyes with with which he sees the hand with which he grips and all that so, so exactly what you have said because you said yeah some to... people may, some some people misuse this ideas actually so by 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 especially people who think they are sheikhs and this and that. So they do, uh, to the extent that some people think, uh, uh, yeah, Allah means that uh, we, can, we, can, we can reach to a point where whatever we say is God saying, even if it is nonsense, okay? Some people can say, go, to, go ahead by saying, they don't need to pray salawat again, they, need, they don't need to fast again, even... Uh, and more than four wives they can get married to because Allah has permitted them all that. So this is, but in the real sense, the literal meaning is clear. Mm -hmm. But we just try to pollute the the interpretation sometimes. May Allah help us. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Uh, so uh, I'm delighted to be in the session. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, I pray Almighty Allah to make it uh, beneficial to us. And... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, enable us to apply the lessons practically. Um, um, pray to my child to continue to strengthen you, sir. And I hope and pray that you're able to complete this translation. Um, it's, a, it's a good project that is very valuable for our time. And I, I sincerely pray to my child to grant you the, the permission to complete it and bless it for you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us and for. Um, for, for, for attending this uh, session with us. May Allah continue to be your guide to sir. So we okay. did, uh, and thanks to Stella Tifazwe for this power presence. And uh, I will go, I'm going to close this session by saying Subhanak Allah wa bihamdik wa na shadu ala ilaha ila anta wa na stakfuka wa na tubu ilay Subhan Rabbi Ta'ala bila izzati amma yasfur Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.